can I ask you about the Big Bang? Mm. Uh, so we talked about the space and time are really big, mm. but then, and we humans give a lot of meaning to the word space and time in our in our like daily lives. Mm. But then, can we talk about this moment of beginning and how we're supposed to think about it? Mm. That the, at the moment of the Big Bang, everything was uh, what? like infinitely small and then it just blew up we have to be careful here because there's a uh, there's a, a common misconception that the big that the big bang is like the explosion of a bomb in empty space that that uh, right. fills up the surrounding pl place it is uh, space it is yeah the, as we, as we understand it it's the fact it's the 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 fact or the the hypothesis but well supported up to a point that that uh, that everywhere in the whole universe, early in the history, uh, matter came together into a very hot, very dense. If you run it backwards in time, matter comes together into a very hot, very dense, and yet very homogeneous uh, plasma of all the different kinds of elementary particles and quarks and antiquarks and gluons and photons and electrons and anti-electrons, everything, you know, all of that stuff. But like uh, really hot. Really hot. Really dense. Uh, really hot. We're talking about uh, way, way hotter than the surface of the sun. Uh, you know, uh, well, well, in fact, if you take the equations as we as they come, the, the prediction is that the temperature just goes to infinity, but then the equations... Uh, break down we don't we don't we don't don't really there are various the equations become infinity equals infinity so they don't feel that it's called a singularity we don't really know uh this is running the equations backwards so you can't really get a sensible idea of what happened before the big bang we don't you know so, the, so we need different equations to address the very earliest moments uh that uh but so Things were hotter and denser. We don't really know why things started out that way. We do. We have a lot of evidence that they did start out that way. Uh, but since most of the, uh, you know, we don't get to visit there <laughs> and do controlled experiments. Most most of the most of the record is is very very processed, and uh, we have to we have to use uh, very. Uh, subtle techniques and powerful instruments to to, to get information that has survived. Get but closer and closer to the Big Bang. Get closer and closer to the 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 beginning of things. And what's revealed there is that, uh, as I said, there there undoubtedly was a period when everything in the universe that we have been able to look at and understand, and that's consistent with everything, is uh, um, the, was in a condition where it was much, much hotter and much, much denser, uh, but still obeying the laws of physics as we know them today. And, and then you start with that. So all the matter is in equilibrium. Uh, and then with s small quantum fluctuations and run it forward, and then it produces, in car at least in broad strokes, the universe we see around us today. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever be able to, with the tools of physics, with the way science is, with the way the human mind is, we'll ever be able to get to the moment of the Big Bang in our understanding, or even oh. the moment before the Big Bang? Can we understand well, what happened before the Big Bang? I'm I'm optimistic, both that we'll be able to uh, measure more, so observe more, and that we'll be able to figure out more. <laughs> so uh, they're very, very tangible prospects for uh, observing the extremely early universe, so much, even much earlier than we can observe now, uh, through looking at gravitational waves. Mm. Gravitational waves, since they interact so weakly with ordinary matter, uh, Sort of send an un a, a minimally processed sim signal from the Big Bang. It's a very weak signal because it's traveled a long way and diffused over long spaces. But uh, but people are gearing up to try to detect 
gravitational waves that could have come from the early universe. Yeah, LIGO's incredible engineering project. It's yes. the most sensitive, <laughs> it, precise yes. devices on Earth. The, the fact that humans can right. build something like that is uh, truly awe-inspiring from an engineering perspective. Right. The, and But these gravitational waves from the early universe will probably be of a much longer wavelength than LIGO is capable of sensing. So there's a beautiful project uh, that's contemplated to put lasers in different par different locations in the solar system. You know, mm -hmm. We really, really separate it by uh, solar system scale differences, like, like artificial planets or moons mm -hmm. in different places and, and see the tiny motions of those relative to one yeah. another as a signal of, of radiation from the Big Bang. We can also maybe indirectly see the imprint of gravitational waves from the early universe on uh, the photons, the, the microwave background radiation that, that <laughs> is our present way of, of seeing into the earliest universe. But those, those photons interact much more strongly with matter. They're much more strongly processed. So they don't give us directly such an unprocessed view of the early universe, of the very early universe. But if gravitational waves leave some imprint on that as they move through, uh, we could detect that too. And people are trying, are, you know, as we speak, <laughs> working very hard towards, uh, towards that goal. It's so exciting to think about <laughs> a sensor the size of a solar system. Like that, uh, that would be a fantastic, I mean, that would be a pinnacle artifact of human endeavor to me. It, it would be such, uh, you know, such an inspiring thing that just, we want to know, and we go to these extraordinary lengths of making gigantic things that are also very sophisticated because what you're trying to do, you, you have to understand how they move, you have to understand the, uh, the properties of light that, that are being used, the interference between light, and, and you have to be able to make the light with lasers and understand the quantum theory and get the timing exactly right. You know, it's an extraordinary endeavor involving all kinds of knowledge from the very strong, very small to the very large, and all in the service of uh, curiosity and built on a grand scale. So, yeah, <laughs> it would, yeah. So it would make I, me I, proud I, to be a human if we yeah. if we if we did that. I love that you're inspired both by <laughs> by the power of theory and the power of experiments. So this is the both both I think are, are exceptionally impressive that the human mind can come up with theories that give us a peek into how the universe works, but also construct tools that are way bigger than uh, the the yeah. evolutionary origins we came from. Right, so. and by the way, you know, the fact that we can design such things and they work yeah. is an extraordinary demonstration that we really do understand a lot. <laughs> and then so, in, in some ways... And it's our ability to answer questions that also leads us to be able to address more ambitious questions.